Hey everyone, it's Jenna Melanson from Canadian Beats Media. Today I'm joined by Michael and Rachel from the Toronto-based band Dead Broke for our latest segment of Zoomies. Welcome, Michael and Rachel. Hey, thanks. So first off, Rachel, care to introduce Dead Broke to our listeners? We are a four-piece uh, rock and roll band with a punk edge. We draw from a lot of different inspirations, um, but we like to keep it loose and fun and entertaining for everybody. Okay, awesome. So you've unveiled your album, When the Night Comes. Michael, could you tell us a bit about the writing process behind the release? Sure. Um, took place over several years, um, which was a, an interesting process, you know, uh, with COVID and there was a lot of uh, hurdles and obstacles um, as we did it. So it's really exciting to have it out. Uh, but the writing process quite simply was we spent a lot of time on the road. We saw a lot of cities and their respective nightlifes, um, as well as coming back to Toronto and living in the city. And uh, we wanted to make a record that kind of tied all those worlds together and those experiences. So it's about things we saw on the road and, you know, the people that uh, in inspired us. And we, we just wanted to put that all into um, a record. And that, that's the soundtrack that we tried to make was, uh, when the night comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. You worked with Alice Bonifant on the album. How was that experience, Rachel? The experience working with Alex has been very exciting and ignited a lot of growth within the band. Mm -hmm. uh, he really pushed us to play with new melodies and open up um, for a lot of experimentation. Okay. We were wel really welcoming um, to any type of workflow. And I think becoming uh, good friends with him really allowed the bond to come through in the music and a lot of the playfulness, but also a lot of the uh, professionality that we tried to um, accomplish. Okay, awesome. So you released a few singles ahead of the album released, such as Not There Yet. Um, so Michael, how did you go about choosing which songs would be singles? That's a great question. Um, it's not easy, uh, especially when you write the songs and <laughs> We like all the songs, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but um, no, we, we were very mindful with this release and just to piggyback off what Rachel was saying, like working with Alex was such an amazing experience because um, I mean, we're an independent band. We do everything ourselves. Um, we've never had a label. Um, everything that we make is, is what we make. And working with Alex is the first time that we had someone uh, kind of bossing us around in a, in a very helpful creative process. You know what I mean? It's um, when you kind of have a wide open canvas to work with, uh, it's easy to get held up and it's easy to overthink things and uh, kind of ch try to chase down any idea. Mm -hmm. And working with Alex, um, who's become a really great friend of us, is like, maybe we won't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, about the singles, um, we wanted to be mindful because it, it had been a while since our, our last release had come out. So we were, we wanted to do a few things. Um, obviously on, on not there yet, we're introducing Rachel um, as a singer. And that's been a process that, uh, you know, we, we've been building that out live over the last few years and that's going to take shape even more on the next record. Um, but we wanted to come in with a bang. So we dropped uh, not yours to take. And then we followed it up with a little more of a laid back vibe and um, introduced Rachel. So that was not there yet. And the third track is Avatar, which is probably the most unique thing we've ever done. Um, there's no real guitars on the track. It's a lot of synthesizers mm -hmm. and uh, heavy, basic drum beats that were, you know, played by Evan, but um, 
just in a fashion that um, wasn't typical for our band. So we introduced that third um, just to kind of show the progression of where we're looking to go. And um, yeah, I'm super proud of all three songs. So you're not, you're no strangers to touring, having shared the stage with Single Mothers, The Dirty Nail, The Beaches, and more. <laughs> Do you have any upcoming shows to tell us about, Rachel? Well, today we're announcing our album release show in December on the 16th at the Horseshoe Tavern. Uh, we have a couple special guests, which um, if you stay tuned, you'll, you'll catch those in the headlines. Um, but other than that, we're looking on to a few more local shows around the GTA and hopefully looking into some international touring in the new year to support the record. Amazing. Okay, so what's your favorite thing about being a musician in Toronto, Michael? Uh, my, my favorite thing about being a musician in Toronto, I would say, is the, the community. Um, you go to a show, you're going to know somebody. Um, that was really great. You know, 10 plus years ago, I'd go to a show and I wouldn't know anybody. And uh, it's that community and kind of the idea that you never know who you're, you're going to run into or who might be in town that's always... Um, fresh and exciting for sure what about you Rachel I would say um, that's a very good answer that Michael shared okay <laughs> I, and I, I would definitely have to agree the community um, is a big big factor in Toronto because you're always you're always maybe a degree of separation from somebody else and um, it really allows this like welcoming feeling mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but also being such a huge hub of Canada for music we're so lucky to have so many great acts coming through and um, gives endless opportunities to be able to network and make some new friends mm -hmm. for sure so the next five questions are just for, for fun and you can both answer so who was the first Canadian band or artist to catch your attention growing up? Oh, great question. Um, I mean, some 41, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the biggest thing happening at the time. And uh, yeah, uh, just to know that they were growing up just down the road kind mm -hmm. of made it all seem a little more attainable. Um, and that was probably, I think, all Killer No Filler was my the first CD I bought from HMV. So okay, one knows HMV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. And Rachel. Uh, funny enough, I would have to have the same answer. In second grade, um, I had my dad buy me "Does This Look Infected" by Sum Forty One, <laughs> and I I, ha I still have pretty much the whole album memorized from those days looking at the cover artwork and and looking through the the little uh inserts but uh not far behind you know billy talent was a huge deal to us as well yes. i uh just anecdotally um i had drinks with both those guys like a month ago it was so crazy i, I was working this concert and uh so i'm backstage and all these guys are backstage and um we have mutual friends and they, they've all been at dead broke shows which is also kind of crazy um and they're like hey man like uh where, where's a good we're at the phoenix where's a good spot to like maybe grab a drink around here like can you can you take us to go get a drink i said yeah sure so i'm walking up church street which was just like exploding during pride month and uh falling behind me is like cone from sum 41 and ian from billy talent and uh chuck coles and brown sound and it, yeah it was just it was such a funny moment <laughs> it's like for sure <laughs> what is happening right now so i mean you know just to even call back to your question like that's the exciting thing about toronto is like some of those guys don't even leave, live in the city anymore but um mm -hmm. it's always exciting seeing people get so excited about being back in toronto you know that's or yeah and coming full circle from you were the fan and now you're you're taking them for a drink. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, if you were asked to perform a cover song, which one would you choose, Rachel? Um, 
Is this from any band or are we thinking Canadian bands? It can be any band. Any band. <laughs> I might need a second with that question. Okay, there are some, you, many, some many really great songs. Uh, there, let me let me just recall to my mind. So we, uh, I mean, when we were getting started off, we would do covers just to be able to do a show, you know, have yeah. enough songs to, to do a show. So we haven't done one in a long time. Um, recently, I've been thinking about covers and doing a song that might not even be of our genre, you know, just maybe like a not obvious cover. Um, I really like that song, um, Mod it's a Modern People by Pulp. Yeah. That could be a cool song. Mm -hmm. um, I had another one, but maybe I'll toss it back to Rage. <laughs> I'm still thinking. Yeah, we've we've had a, a lot of fun covering some different acts from, you know, the Stooges, Queens of the Stone Age, even some Neil Young stuff. Um, part of me has been kind of thinking about doing some like a 90s pop song lately yeah. or even maybe early thousands so I'm not sure that I even have it fully dialed in just yet um for sure but it would be cool just on the note of me stepping onto the mic a little bit more it would be fun to call back a, a really um almost random uh female pop artist Mm -hmm. and make it maybe a little bit heavier um, but something that's nostalgic for all the girls in the crowd I feel like that would be really fun definitely so what's a song other than one of your own that you can sing word for word Michael um Modern Love by David Bowie okay uh, oh sorry go ahead go ahead <laughs> we're doing speed round I forgot so Rach <laughs> yeah oh my god <laughs> you have some really good questions um kind of ironically but not ironically uh in the end by lincoln park has kind of become <laughs> kind of become a funny like fun karaoke song for me whenever that uh opportunity arises so i might have to go with that or thrash unreal by against me okay um since fall is officially here, what's your favorite outdoor activity in the fall months? Rachel. I really love going for walks. Um, <laughs> I, I love doing that all year round, but there's something about the uh, really crisp air mm -hmm. that just kind of gives you a little bit more life and pep in your step. So um, walking the trails and doing some hikes always feels really good. And skateboarding at nighttime too. Okay. Michael? Uh, Knee-high boots, infinity scarves, pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, we okay. have the um, we have the Niagara escarpment here um, where we live. It mm -hmm. is beautiful, and I love going up there for hikes. It's a great place that anyone should check out to see the, the leaves change. Okay. You're higher in elevation, so it's uh, some great walking trails up there. Also, your motorcycle usually runs a lot smoother in the in the fall because it's not overheating. So Rachel drives, so Rachel drives a motorcycle. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanksgiving is almost here. So I have to ask, what's your favorite side dish for the big meal, Michael? Uh, yeah, it's got to be the mashed potatoes. OK. Yeah. Rachel? I'm going to have to go with stuffing. I was never a big stuffing girl growing up, and I don't know why that was. <laughs> but now I can't get enough of it. Okay. So that's it for Zoomies. Thanks for joining me, and congratulations on the new album. Thank you so much.